baby. Do you guys have my shirt? Every day is an adventure. <laughs> so true, right? Every painting is an adventure. All right, you guys, we're gonna paint today. And you know, I thought it would be really, really fun is to do a moonscape, but we're gonna kind of do a pointillism today or a slashalism. <laughs> and we're gonna make it out of a whole bunch of a series of little dashes and lines. So it'd be really pretty and it would be really cool. So four colors. So either white or a light cream, a darker blue, a lighter blue and a black. We're gonna see how this looks, okay? Um, simple palettes are fun. So we're gonna try that. Oh, I have something else to show you guys too. It kind of matches my shirt. Look, my son, fifth grade, painted this gorgeous painting. Isn't that funny? He won second prize in his art contest in school. I think he did a dang good job. It's cute. Remind me of my shirt today. Anyway, super proud mama moment here. I love my boys, my childrens. I got so. I'm gonna actually put it here today. Put it out so you can see. My lovely chillins. Fifth grade, right? Fifth grade. Anyway, get your brushes out. The three sizes we normally have. Big, medium, small. Get all your supplies. Canvas, water cup, plate, paper towel. And I think you got it. And we're ready to paint today. I'm ready to paint. Let's have an adventure. Okay, everybody, grab those four colors I told you to and just put them out on your palette. Okay, all four of them loaded at the same time. Grab your biggest brush, get it wet, and dry it off a little. You're gonna start with your moon shape, right? Where you want it. I'm doing mine right in the middle. And be done. You can do this as big as you want to on any size canvas. I'm gonna go for our lightest blue and circle around that. Okay, you can kind of drag it out. Okay, using that same pile of paint because you can even dry off some paint on your towel. Soften the inside just a little bit too. Get off some of the paint on your paintbrush. Go for it again. Okay. Then, kind of wet right around the edge of some of this, kind of brush a little bit more. Because I got too much water in there, which you can do. So I'm going to add more paint once it dries. That's great. Then we'll go for our darkest blue. I'm not going to out my brush in between. I'm just kind of going around the edges. Darkest blue. Kind of blend it into your lighter blue. And how you do that is just go right on the two lines of them. Where the two colors meet. Just take your whole brush and go right between the two colors and it will blend. As you're going, don't forget to do your sides around the sides. Because it always makes for a better looking picture when you're done. Okay, once you got your darker blue on, you take a little tiny bit of black. Black goes a long way, remember. And just run it up into the corners painting okay because that'll give you just a smidge darker sky right around the bottom I'm doing more of a darker at the bottom if you can tell um, like a thicker line of black than the top it gets the Sun is more higher in the sky is what I mean okay and right there where it blends you just kind of go over it a couple times and this is going to be pointillism ish that's a word, which means it doesn't have to be perfectly blended, okay? And of course, I gotta get my little spots down here. I have the funny easel that leaves that. Oh. If you got a little too much black in there, I got a little black right there. And then come back, rinse out your brush pretty good and get a little bit more blue on it and come back and just fill in where it's a little black that you're not liking. Okay, get a light blue coming on top of that. You can just play and play and play with it. That's where I'm going to leave it right here. We're going to let it dry for a few minutes and then we're going to come back and do the pointillism part of it. Do you like my double jointed fingers? Gross, right? Like when I point at something? <laughs> I'm like, this part right here. 
I know. I love it. Look at this. Can you guys do that with your hand? I mean, like, gross, right? It's artistic. Thumbs? Look at that. That checker thumb. Oh, yeah. I'm telling you, I got some multi-talent in these hands. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so at this point, you can choose if you want to do a bigger dashes and, sl and uh, bigger pointillismous or smaller. So this is smaller brush or bigger brush. This is just my flat skinny brush. I'm going to start with this one because it'll give me more, it'll cover more area for my, for my painting. What we're going to do is we're going to dip that in some water, get it dried off because I usually start with a damn brush. And we are going to do a little bit of every color that we have. Sorry, I got to get my brush ready. Every color that we have in here, we're going to put it around, but in different spots a little bit. So this light white color we'll start with. Okay. I'm going to bring it in dashes. Just barely. What I'm doing is just touching this um, canvas and making little dots, little dashes of color and paint around. Okay. And I'm going to bring those like clear out into this blue. Okay, all the way around, we're just making a circle shape, bring it clear out of here. Don't be afraid to get crazy, because you know what? If you do something that you don't like, you can paint over it again in black, or in a blue. Okay, get right, see some of that blue's not even dry quite yet, and it's starting to drag it into the middle there. That's cool. Okay, those little blues are starting to pick up in there. Okay, now I'm going to start mixing a little bit, just kind of the order that I went before. I'm going to get some of this light blue. And I'm going to start dragging that in there into like the parts that uh, are the darker blue. I can even bring them into the white a little bit to kind of mess those up. Okay. These colors will not be the exact color you started with because you were blending them all together. So they're different. You'll see these pixel spots come out throughout your painting. And you're just pretty much just picking up your paintbrush and just touching it in spots. I'm doing it on the angle like this, so I'm brushing it like when I sorry, when I go to brush it, I'm brushing the angle of the brush this way. I'm not going like this with the paintbrush. Make sense? So I can get these skinny lines, and I can take this blue way out in here. Okay, all the way around. Now you're gonna start taking some of this dark blue and putting it into that lighter blue. And bring it way up in there in places and way down into the black in places. Now this is going to be a silhouette moon. So the moon is all going to be out and I'm going to put something that's a silhouette in the front of it, which makes it a really easy painting and um, you can do any kind of silhouette. You can find something that you like on the computer, print it out, cut it out, trace it, put it on. And it makes it really easy for painting, really easy painting. You can just imagine something in your mind and put it on there. Whatever you want to do. It'll be fun. Anyway, you see how cool that's starting to look with the, it looks kind of like Starry Night. So, um, this, like by Van Gogh, so Van Gogh kind of has the dashes. He looks more dashy. And Seurat, he's a famous painter. His looks more pointy. He used a lot of points in his, which is pretty much like a dot. You could use the back of your paintbrush and do this if you really wanted to. But that would take a lot more time. It would look, it would give it a fun, totally different look too. So kind of told it up to you what you want to do. So from here, I'm going to get a little bit of black on my paintbrush and a little bit of the darker blue at the same time. So I don't overpower the black and I'm just going to start putting some black right around in the dark spots here. Bring some of them up into this blue in spots. Reload that again. And I'm going to put it all over the place. And you can still kind of see the background wash that I did. If you wanted to cover all that background wash, you just keep doing these little dashes all over it and it, like see these little spots in between you could you could have another dash in there and it would cover it eventually but it still kind of looks cool like this so don't worry about it being too perfect I'm always one that says don't make it real perfect it's cooler 
it doesn't have to be perfect. Things do not have to be perfect. People are always worried about things being perfect and they don't have to be perfect. Sometimes the less perfect, the better. <clears throat> it goes with you too, as a person. You don't have to be perfect. Sometimes the less perfect, the more real and the better. Like my double jointed fingers. I don't have perfect fingers, and I'm not going to claim to. <laughs> I like what I got, and I'll just stick with it, and I'll make do of it. Yeah. And there was an artist, Frida. Frida, I forget her last name. She's a Mexican artist. And she always painted her flaws in her pictures. Not always, but a lot of times. And she exaggerated her flaws. <laughs> So, you know, she had a good way of kind of teasing herself, making fun of herself a little bit. And I like that. You gotta, you gotta kind of laugh it off and just play with it. Anyway, there is kind of a finished version. I just kind of look around and go, okay, I think I could need something here. I'm just mess basically meshing the colors in and out. So I'll have some of these dark blues into my black. See that? Put some of those dark blues into my black. Put some of the dark blues up into your lighter blue. I have black in here, so I'm not going to touch it. Mesh them around. Mesh them around. And this is pretty much the background of our painting. I mean, how simple was that? A couple colors. Done. We're going to let it dry for a few minutes and come back and do a silhouette. Hey! It's dry. We're ready to paint our silhouette in front. Now, you guys, this is fun. You can choose whatever you want. A swing sitting there. A branch with a bird on it, a branch with a cat, a dog, whatever is your heart's content. You can do a haunted house at Halloween time. Um, I mean, like, the possibilities are endless. Forest, like my son's cute little prize picture I showed you. You could do a forest just right in front, silhouette of trees, okay? Um, a tree like this. Can you see that right there? Without the white on it, okay? Oh, can, you can't see that. Just kidding. Let's focus on it. A tree. I did. Oh. <laughs> My son's poor picture. There we go. A deciduous tree like this. A silhouette like that, minus the white. You could do something like that. There is complete and total freedom on that one. Like you can do anything in front of this moon, and it will look really cool. I am going to choose to do a fence and a hill. So watch me do this fence and this hill. Okay. I'm going to do my medium paintbrush. That's a little safe. It's in between the two. And I think I'm going to start with my fence first and then I can always put my heel in. But I'm going to do these fence posts that kind of come down. You can always start small and go big later. So start small. Rickety at the top is great because it looks like an old wooden fence post. And that's cool. And I'm going to get them to kind of go shorter off in the distance because I want it to look like my fence is kind of trickling off in the distance. Okay, I just put these post lines in there and then all I'm going to do is connect them like this. With some little bumpity wiggly lines. Okay. They will get smaller as they come across too because obviously your fence is getting smaller as it goes off in the background. Okay. Here we go. Bumpity rickety is always great because that's what fence look like, old wooden fences. Make sure you drag off them off the side. Same with the front. Make sure that, that kind of comes off the front and the side. Wrap them around on the side, wherever you have those going. My hill is going to come down like this. I'm just going to kind of follow my fence. It's going to come down like this. I'm going to fill that all in down there. I'm going to leave it like that. You can put something on your fence, you know, whatever you want to do. I mean, you, there's the sky's the limit. 
I don't really like that. And you can totally finish the painting this way, or you can add a smidge of color here and there to the front silhouette, which will kind of make fun too. So make it fun. Rinse out your brush with black. Put a little bit of the colors you used, and we're going to kind of just put them like maybe even through the fence holes. So you can see that light coming through. And you're still doing that pointillism thing where you're breaking up the, the image. Okay, that sunlight is coming through on your hilltop here. Okay. You can make it be brighter by putting the white right across the tip there. Okay, that's my pointillism coming through. Make sure that uh, the light is coming through it. Make sure that you can still see the bricks and if you can't come back with a little bit of black and add black into there so you can see that there's breaks in the in the different areas so it still looks pointillism ish pointillism ish -ish. that's my new word for the day okay and then also if you want to i'm gonna make that one really bright right there because that's right where the moon is shining Pew! Oh, and you know what else helps really well when you're painting is sound effects. Totally. I mean, seriously, you've got to try that. Okay. So, some one more thing to just decide if you want to do is just add a little bit of touch to the tips of the fences if you want to. We'll try and see what we think. If we don't like it, we'll go back. But just go a little tips here and there where the moon might be touching it. Just along the top. What do you guys think? Do you like, do you like the moonlight? Yeah, just right along the tips. Like that. Kind of break up the lines so it looks pointillism-ish. Pointillism. And that's cool, right? I like it. I keep looking at the camera thinking, ooh, that looks good from a distance. Not so much close up. You know, that's a trick when you're painting is to step away. Back away from it and see what it looks like. And... Uh, it might look better. That looks cool, right? So you can add something to the fence or leave it like that. But that is how... Actually, that would go on that side, I think. Did that just mess it up a little bit? Guess what? Come back with some black. I'll try to take it off a little bit like that. There we go. Anyway, fun. It's finished, you guys. Isn't that great? There you go, you guys. A beautiful moon set. A beautiful moon silhouette. Kind of spooky. Kind of romantic. <laughs> so, you guys, I took you on an adventure today. Every day is an adventure. I took you on an adventure. Painting. A beautiful moon, pointillism style, Surat and go. Do you feel professional? Because you should. Beautiful. You can put anything you want with this. You can do this in so many different colors. You could do oranges with reds and blacks. You could do blue and purples around the edges. Keep looking over there because I can see how pretty it looks. Anyway, you know, leave me a comment. Show me your picture. If you painted something, I want to see it. Show me it in the comments. I would love to see what you guys are coming up with. Have fun. That's the most important part. Have an adventure, baby!